Hello everyone, my name is Amanda Hellman and I am excited to be here with you. I am praying as I just continue to pray that every word I speak be of Holy Spirit, all natural thoughts gone, and the Lord reigns and speaks and that this may bless you today. And so I am calming from a place of current rest and prayer and praise. And recently, and even the beginning of my year, my theme is Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I love Proverbs 3, 5, 6, but it's trusting in the Lord with all of our heart. And I also am hearing him say, especially the last two months, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still, be in rest, be in him, and know that he is God above everything. In him we rest. In him, Psalm 91 says, he is our dwelling place. He is our safety. He is our joy. He is our shepherd. He protects and he is the one that defeats everything. There's no one, there's no principality of power that ever has defeated him. And he is the conduit of love and the love that we need and the belonging we need and the acceptance we need. And so recently I've been praying and God's been showing me revelations of, you know, dreams and promises that are coming forth. And I'm not sure about you, but I've been birthing promises and contending for promises for years. Uh, 2015 to 2020, I've been on a radical journey with the Lord in acceleration of healing. But really, I would say not that it's acceleration. It's been five years of deep healing and allowing him into all of the places of my heart so that I can trust him in all of the places of my heart and not just my heart, my mind, and my soul. And so he took me to Luke this week and I love reading the word. I've been in Joshua, you know, and I've been in uh, Judges now and Numbers and I will speak on that um, because I believe it's a time of birthing promises and being bold as God leads, when he leads in boldness. Right now is a time of consecration, a time of the fear of the Lord and returning to the fear of the Lord and our first love and doing things not a performance and not because we feel the need, but because he is leading us, right? There are times where we speak. There are times where we pray. There are times where we ask a question. There are times where we boldly speak the message, right? At all times, we are an epistle, living epistle of Jesus Christ in us. So we move when he does. We speak and we move and have our being and think as he does, right? So it's a constant return to asking him for his way. And so as our birthing promises, I come to, to Luke. And in Luke, first chapter of Luke, and that's where I really stood, five years ago, I was in such a painful place. And I remember weeping on my bed. And a lot of times when I look up, God will have a Bible verse ready for me to look at. And yes, I get, you know, dreams, I get pictures, I get words, you know, I really hear him a lot in the word. He uses the word a lot to break things. He uses a lot of the word to confirm what he's speaking. And so there's myri myriads of ways and everybody's different in what is your greatest way to hear him, but he speaks in everything. And so, um, you know, Mary was getting ready for her promise of marriage. She was getting ready to, to get, have marriage and Zechariah and Elizabeth, who are faithful and righteous, were waiting on a promise of kids. And it was, they were getting older and, you know, the, the heart grows weary at times, right? And we ha keeping forging ahead. And the angel came to Zechariah and told him that he was going to be having a son. And at first, Zechariah didn't believe. Like, he was just like, oh my gosh, you know? I mean, after so long, it's hard to keep, right, to those promises at times. And eventually, he, he did. They, Him and Elizabeth were pregnant, and they were pregnant with a promise. And it wasn't just a natural promise. They were going to steward their son, yes, but it was God's um, John the Baptist who was going to come forth, right, ahead to say, repent, change the way you think. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Like, there's a better kingdom. And he was coming first. And so he 
you know, was filled with the Holy Spirit and in Elizabeth. And then, you know, as Mary was preparing, here an angel comes and shows up and talks to her and tells her that the Holy Ghost is going to come upon her and she would be carrying the most, the Son of God. She would give birth to the Son of God. And wow, you know, and here's Mary being like, wow, behold the hand of the Lord um, and be it unto me according to thy words. So she did receive that. And then the angel, you know, departed. Mary had a lot of hardship in that, right? And I won't go into all that, but she had a lot of hardship. People probably judging her, thinking something. she did something, you know, even Joseph having to see from the Lord and he was faithful to stay with her. But a lot of stuff going on, right? In this birthing, in this season and the process, right? All the mountains that have to come down, all the hardship within it to keep that laser point focus on breaking those mountains in our life, on the focus and the promise of God, despite what we see in the natural, the promises of God and saying, yes, God, even if it doesn't look like this, I'm trusting and contending for what you have in this season. And so once she had that, she saw Elizabeth, her and Elizabeth first uh, re reunited again. Elizabeth was carrying John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist, the promise to say, prepare the way, right? And um, and so as soon as, you know, Mary was again filled with the Holy Spirit and Jesus was in her and he was the promise that she was birthing. And so as soon as Elizabeth was with, um, you, you know, um, Mary, the womb left for joy. John left for joy. The Holy Spirit in John left for joy, recognizing Jesus Christ, being a witness to Jesus early, right? Our womb, our it was already there as a witness. And Mary was like, oh my goodness. She or uh, you know, she heard that as soon as um as that salutation and her um the womb left for joy, you know, Elizabeth said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. In our womb is fruit. So as we get through all the junk, all the other stuff, God has seeds in there. As we get through healing, as we allow God to get through our mind, our heart, our soul, and just purify our entire body, there is fruit in that womb. And he wants to get through, get rid of all the other stuff, and living waters flow through us, right? In that process, we can trust his process because he is birthing in us good things to help many others. Birth and Jesus is the greatest promise, the greatest Passover. He is the Passover. He is the one we pass over with because of his blood. The power of the blood, right, speaks that it breaks off everything and his love. There's nothing that can separate us from him. And so as soon as this happened, Mary also filled with Jesus and the Holy Spirit said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. That's been my prayer that our souls magnify the Lord, that our souls are filled with Holy Spirit and everything that needs to go goes so that only the Lord can jump out and we can say, we magnify the Lord. And she says, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. And this is in Luke, you know, after Luke 1, 45, 46, and, and so on. I'm going to continue. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the low state of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And here she was praising God, but also because of her faithfulness and what she was birthing for generations, she would be a mother for generations who would remember who she was. And God honored her in that, not to be an idol, but to be honored as a, a daughter of the Most High God, who God deemed worthy to carry his son. And all of us have seeds deemed worry, uh, deemed worthy to, to carry for the Lord has birthings in us to come forth, right? The earth groans for this mature sons and daughters. So as we seek this hiding place and pray and get filled with that oil that we need 24 seven, then we come out bursting forth in greater measure of love and people will see Jesus Christ. And everybody's going to look different with this. Some of us are going to be, it's going to look different. And we can't judge other people's what they're called to do. We are all called to be living epistles. And that looks different for everybody. Whatever God's calling to us in obedience, whether it be praying for hours, whether it be speaking out loud for hours, whether it be dancing, whatever it is, in each season, God sees our faithfulness and he sees the motives of our heart and he sees our heart and he knows our deepest desires and we and that may our deepest desires of our heart align with his, right? And so 
she said, God is mighty in what he's done to me. Great things and holy is God's name. So the fear of the Lord and holiness returning to the earth, right? All the earth, even the rocks cry out if we don't. So I'm praying that we continue to just humble ourselves and ask God, examine us and help us to just rest in you and abide in you. Because from you, from your rest, from you being rooted deeply in you, nothing else, nothing of our performance or anything else, but in you comes great fruit and faithfulness. And so he shows strength of his army, he scattered the proud and God, yeah, he shatters the proud and the imaginations of our heart and he keeps him and he, he puts down the mighty from their seats and exalted them or lo of low degree. And God fills the hungry with good things and rich he has sent empty away. He is, we are the, I, I always say poor in spirit means that we are so hungry and need of the great physician of need of Jesus Christ. And so then, you know, Elizabeth birthed the promise. So did Mary. The promises were birthed forth. And the last, one of the last miracles of Zechariah. He was not able to speak because at first he didn't believe. And Elizabeth knew her son would be John. And they brought in Zechariah. He wrote on a tablet, John, agreeing and witnessing to what God had said. And then he spoke and worshiped the Lord. And it is at our moments of freedom and liberty and deliverance and healing on the land and, and after it, may we always praise and remember. May we never forget what God has done for us. Always thanking him, always being gratitude, even in the darkest night of the soul, right? Had those hardest times, even in the hardest time that we rise up and say, God, you are good. You are good. And continue to learn that because it is, it takes time depending on past things that have happened. There's a process to learn how good he is. And he is good in every season, but to believe it, mind, heart, and soul, right? And be fully surrendered. And so he praised God. And so at the end in uh, Luke 1, it says, again, when he spoke, he said, um, he filled with, Zacharias was filled, well, Zacharias, Zechariah, you know, Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he prophesied saying, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In his holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life, and thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt... Go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Therefore, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from our on high hath visited us, to give us light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet unto the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed and grew in spirit. So again, he is our promise. And I'm praying many of us are birthing promises. And may we go forth when God says to go and be instructed. And may we not be afraid, right? Just like in Joshua, be not afraid. Go forth, right? Do not be afraid for I'm with you wherever you shall go. And when God tells us to take the high place of the mountains, wherever he says, when he prepares us, he's equipping us, right? To be nothing in common with the enemy everything in common with Jesus Christ as is healing us and we hear clearly and as we're just so sold out for him because of what he's done for us whether it be in the marketplace or in um in ministries everywhere marketplace writing publishing reading whatever it is may we do unto the Lord may we serve him in everything and he is faithful no matter where we are as we serve him in our hearts for him to be known and so I pray, encouraging those who are Joshua's to rise up, you know, the Caleb's, the JL's, who, um, the Joshua's, you know, those who are faithful. And may we not forget to teach our young. In Joshua, in Numbers, they read the word and all the people were there. And then all the people that came by, it was young from birthing in the womb all the way through older generations. May we not 
um, discard any generation, but honor all generations, but teach our young children how to pray, how to speak, how to lay on hands. What is the word of God? May we speak it. May we show them worship and praise. May we show them when we make mistakes, how we go to the Lord. May we teach them from what we've been taught. May we show them and love them and be mothers and fathers and know that there's journeys, right? There's journeys, but may we teach them young and help them and, and honor and, and grow with them. And may we just be, I pray our hearts be changed from stone, hearts of stone to hearts of flesh, honoring and following the Lord and his path wherever we go, because you will be blessed. So blessings and be well.